الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا قوا انفسكم واهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجاره عليها ملائكه غلاظ شداد لا يعصون الله ما امرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون صدق الله العظيم respected brothers and sisters I feel somewhat embattled when it comes to a particular issue like you know like the issue keeps knocking on your door and constantly competes for your time keeps coming up it's constantly causing distress uh you know uh, because you're having to constantly listen to people's agony and people's grief and people's uh, difficulties etc etc and the issue that i feel kind of embattled in the face of is the issue of how we treat members of our society and in particular our women and i know that other imams feel the same because it keeps coming up in our discussions again and again and again and again but the reason why i personally feel that way is just email after email after email message after message on tv question after question after question on the on the tv show that i have with you know where we take questions from the community um people coming to the office knocking on the door i need advice on this and i need advice on that and the greatest the most distressing incidents and situations and circumstances are those of women suffering some form of physical emotional psychological and financial abuse now when addressing this issue there's the the few cases they do exist of men who are suffering the same at the hands of women i've i've come across them i've dealt with them they do happen but i'll tell you from my experience that you know that in all of my time um dealing with these issues and i i haven't kept track of the number of cases that come to my attention and i can't always deal with them and i can't help everybody that comes with this problem i think i'm just thinking right now actually i think i've only come across two so this is just in terms of my own survey based on the cases that come to me i've come across two and of course i'm sure there's more than that proportionately speaking there's more because men generally tend to feel more embarrassed about bringing this stuff out because they think that people will laugh at me and etc etc and they feel more embarrassed or well, i'm meant to be the one that's taking control etc but actually this is exactly the the sentiment this is this this particular social dynamic is exactly why women get abused because men feel they're the ones that are supposed to be the ones who are able to do it so when they're the victim of abuse it's like it's weird so they don't want to come out and talk about it right that's exactly what's wrong anyway so you know it, it i don't know how many times just this week i've had to deal with this issue okay now in islam right right or wrong we all say that we believe in family that the family structure is is strong right or wrong we always say this right and we pride ourselves in this in the family 
the central role right in the family in the family structure and as as far as the contribution to the health of the family who plays the most vital role women do ask all of us let me slightly apply a bit of lateral thought to this right so let's forget about wives for a second let's forget about daughter-in-laws for a second and think in terms of mother right so how central is our, our mothers to our families so apply it to ourselves central right how central are our mothers to uh, is their position in Islam what did the Prophet Sallallahu say that she is three times more worthy or rightful of our good conduct than our fathers so her centrality as far as good conduct goes is three times multiplied compared to what our father gets why is it even necessary to say that because your good conduct towards your father for the most part is kind of granted he's mostly for most people the discipline of the father is what children take the most seriously right so which one has to be emphasized where it's likely that we will take the person for granted we will take the mink where their softness will be taken advantage of right the Prophet has emphasized that one so their centrality is, is it's enshrined in Sharia you know um means um like the word for mother you know essentially means core central essence right the word means that okay so so let's think in terms of those relationships right how central to you if you have an aunt a khala your mother's sister as far as your emotional you know people's emotional health as far as a, a, a place from which you receive love and comfort how central is the role of the aunt your father's sister right you know in Bengali we call them uh, fufu or I think pupi they call them in Urdu and stuff right your father's sister how central is she everyone has a story isn't it as far as your aunts I'm sure there are bad apples and bad stories but generally speaking right you, you know your, your khala is like your mom because she's always been there she might have always been helping your mom in some way or other because of your own mother's strong relationship with her sister we generally tend to have a strong bond with with our aunts right your father's uh, sisters you know I don't know sometimes the father's sisters tend to play this slightly more authoritative role because they're the father's sister okay sometimes oh you know but again very very loving what about grandmothers see from an emotional point of view these these relationships are central to our emotional well-being can, can anyone disagree with that right no you know like grandmothers the centrality of a grandmother you know the one who hasn't had hasn't enjoyed the company of their grandmother knows so much more so than a grandfather you know the, all the males in the family are roughly the same right they don't have much time for you they sit on the sofa and watch TV you know or whatever or read the newspaper while you sit and play around and when they're kind of really annoyed they're like hey quiet and down you know that kind of thing and when you get in trouble they discipline you you know and they bring they bring the bread home yeah but emotionally speaking it's the women that are central now the, the question is right so so all these cases of abuse are wives being abused by their husbands okay emotionally so the guy doesn't beat her but he he is constantly putting her down he talks to her in he talks her down to her uh, won't speak to her like another human being like a companion maybe a friend more like a, a servant more like somebody he can order around even the tone even the way even the dynamics of the conversation like in my culture you'll often see husbands will speak to their wives in terms of you know they'll say uh, tui 
Yeah, you'll see, you'll often see that the husband will speak to the wife, you know, as in, in, in informal terms, in these informal terms, right? So they'll say tui or in Urdu they'll say tu. But the same won't work the other way around. Okay? She'll have to say afne or ap when it comes to her husband. And this is often the case. I've, also, I've seen the other one, I've seen it where they're both the same, where they both say ap to one another, which is ideal. Both are being respectful to one another. But what you see, which is very, very common, that it's enshrined even in language that they that that the respect isn't the same okay so so there's that so this is this in the end any human being if your child uh, in school let's talk about a child who's into well into their teens going to university but if all they've ever experienced for years and years and years is people speaking down to them telling them what to do ordering them etc etc there's no physical abuse right then they are suffering emotional abuse and they the, the psychological effect of that will manifest eventually all right it'll start to affect their minds so if it's not obviously in the extreme cases there's physical abuse okay then there's economic abuse case after case after case i've had at least four or five cases of economic financial abuse where the wife is deprived of any kind of financial autonomy. Okay, whether it's even sometimes with regards to her own money. Sometimes even her, she has she doesn't even have control of her own money. Right? And if she and and, and, and often she doesn't have her own money. Okay? Um, money that she has every right to, to, to have for herself, she doesn't get. Okay? And she may or may not be working or anything like that. Usually in these kind of scenarios, she's busy with the children, with the family, and that's it. And not only does she have no autonomy, she also has no transparency. And in Sharia, it's not necessarily a requirement that a man shares all the details of his finances with his wife, right? It's not necessarily a requirement. It's the healthier thing to do. It's the better thing to do. But the Sharia also grants the woman absolute autonomy over her own money. She has absolute control over her own money, right? And any money that she gets, her maha, even things like uh, government, uh, what do you call it, benefits and things like that, that come in her name, that are awarded to her, it's hers. But no, she's deprived of all of that. That's financial and economic abuse. Then there's family abuse, what you might call a social abuse. And this is the popular one. The abuse of the mother-in-law. And some of the cases, Wallahi al-Azim, I can't get my head around them. I can't get my head around the extent of the abuse where in the, the psychological, the emotional, the, the even physical, financial abuse is, is the husband might be okay. You know, he's, he might, might be a decent guy. But he's helpless in, in, in front of his mother. He's helpless in front of his sisters and the wider family. And they pile on the abuse. And he feels, I have to obey my mom, what can I do? My mom has to take priority. Fair enough. Your mom can take all the priority that you want, right? But it can't be at the expense of your wife. Two things are happening. Two things are happening. Number one, by not, by not getting in the way, by not stopping or in some way controlling or managing that situation, you're enabling sin for your mother. You're allowing your mom to commit abuse and oppression for which she will be accountable on the Day of Judgment. Because, let's face it, the Sharia puts no obligation on a wife, legally speaking, to serve her in-laws. Okay? There is a kind of, there is a kind of uh, moral kind of expectation. And the fuqaha will even word this funny. Are some fuqaha like straight up. She has to have her own place, completely separate. She has no obligations to the in-laws, only to her husband. But sometimes some fuqaha, especially in the subcontinent, they speak about this kind of moral expectation. And what that, I understand that to mean that, obviously they're elders, aren't they? Your mother-in-law and your father-in-law is an elder, right? And being good to elders and being kind to them is a normal moral requirement. But it kind of 
goes into some other extreme when she has no privacy in her own room. Anybody can walk in whenever they feel like it. It's frowned upon her to be to spend some time in her own room locked up. Oh, she sits locked up in her room all the time. Hello? She has every right to. She has every right to be spend time in her room on her own. No, she's got to spend more time in the kitchen. Okay? Oh no, my son is too kind to her. He's too nice to her. Okay? She takes advantage of him. And then the, the politics between the in-laws, her parents and his parents. You know, and I, for, for, for a long time I used to think, oh, this stuff is rare. But no, it's all, it's, we're surrounded by it, especially Asians. Right? We're surrounded by it. It's happening all over. It, it's, the more I see it, the more it appears as though it's all pervasive. Like family after family after family. It's like abuse by the in-laws of a daughter-in-law is the norm. Now let me come to this. Now you all know this, right? This is a cliche. This is a social cliche. Right or wrong? Meaning that we all know it exists. Okay? But we don't stop it. <coughs> we don't stop it. It, it. it happens to our own wives, right? And we think, well, at least, you know, well, I'll, give, I'll be her comfort. I'll buy her gifts and, you know, I'll try and be her solace, but what can I do? It's my mum. You've got to come up with a way to manage that situation so that she doesn't suffer the abuse in the first place. It's not enough to just say, she'll be abused all day and when I come home I'll make it better. You're not going to make it better. Eventually, she will fall out with you. Now, let me, let's, let's now do a little test, okay? Now, we all acknowledge the centrality of the mother to the family, yes? The aunts, the khala, the pupu, the pupi, yeah? We all acknowledge the centrality of a grandmother, yes? And so on and so forth. Well, isn't every wife, isn't every wife a mother, a khala, a pupi, a grandmother eventually, an aunt? Isn't every wife, every daughter-in-law, isn't she all of those things? And if she's, if she's been suffered in these circumstances of emotional abuse, financial abuse, etc, 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 it's not good for her mental state, right? If she's central to the family, then it's not good for the family. And if it's not good for the family, it's not good for the children. And if it's not good for the children, it's not good for the whole society, right? So generation after generation, okay, suffer the consequences of this abuse. So, to be honest with you, this khutbah is, is almost like a complaint, you know, because I've, dealt, I've been dealing with this so much that it's, it's almost, it's, you know, like, I'm worried that I'm going to become numb to this and eventually just like go on autopilot, you know, like deal with it robotically. But for now, it, it, affects, it's, it affects me emotionally. It's really, really difficult to tolerate some of the things that I get to hear. Of course, in individual cases, there's two sides to every story. But come on, you know what's going on in your own home. You know. If your wife is being abused, you know. If you don't, then you suffer something known as a moral crisis, a crisis of conscience. That means that you compartmentalize. You understand justice when it comes to your friends. You understand fairness when it comes to your friends. You understand good treatment when it comes to your own sisters. You understand fair treatment when it comes to your daughter. Oh, I'm going to make sure my daughter gets a really good husband who treats her well. And she has a really good mother-in-law who's maybe modern and independent. So she doesn't have to suffer it. But in your own home, your wife doesn't get that same courtesy. Right? My daughter, I'm going to get her married to some guy who's going to be settling on his own, has his own flat away from his family so she doesn't suffer any in-law abuse. But my daughter-in-law doesn't deserve the same thing. My wife, oh, you know, I can tolerate, etc., etc. You know, she's, she can handle it, I'll help her. My sister, I want to deal with my brother-in-law. I want to deal with that family. Okay, so we compartmentalize. So we have a crisis of conscience. We have a crisis of our own morality. We have to deal with it at a social level. We don't realize how deeply this stuff affects our society. What we're saying is, to the people who matter 
the most in our societal structure we cannot afford them basic courtesies like fair treatment like compassion like empathy like justice like generosity just normal kindness we can't afford that to the people who are the most important to us in society how do you expect us to have to for our children to have a good social upbringing it's not possible it's not possible we're not going to be a healthy society anytime soon if we don't fix this problem